I don't feel like this will ever stop me. I will only stop when I really lose my entire sight. Everybody, it's so great to see you today. We're sitting down for another artist interview with Eri Velton, also known as Eri Welly. He is the first Lorcana artist from Brazil. We're super excited to have him on the channel. He is the artist behind the Dingle Hopper and the Lantern in Lorcana. Now, as everybody knows, we can't talk a ton about Lorcana just because the game isn't out yet, but we really wanted to take this opportunity to get to know Eri as an artist, and we're so excited to have him. Hey, Ari. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited and nervous at the same time because, you know, I'm getting famous right now somehow. <laughs> and it's everything so new to me. So it's like, yeah, I, hi, I'm Ari Belly. <laughs> well, Lurkana is new to all of us. So, I mean, we're all kind of the same boat. Um, I, I also have to say we did turn our background green yes. in honor of the Brazilian oh. uh, today. <laughs> so. yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Ari, in just a few short months, there are going to be thousands of Lorcana fans opening new packs of yeah. cards and experiencing your art for the very first time. We always love to start off by having you just introduce yourself to your new fans. Oh, this is really a hard question because I don't really feel like I have a single style as an artist. Like I can say, like, I am this or that. Um, I like color a lot, so you might see me studying color and experimenting with color. And I do like paint strokes, like those bold paint strokes. This is the thing I like exper experimenting a lot. Um, when it comes to, to themes, I do like cute stuff. <laughs> I love these like uh, creatures and stuff like that. So you might see some stuff like that on my art but I as I said I do like experimenting a lot I don't see myself with one single style once I get to a style I will be changing uh, on the next piece so that's what I think about myself I think I'm very uh, I like this way of wandering off and studying a lot as well so this is me I guess <laughs> But, you know, one thing I did mention to Liam actually just this morning is just the diversity of your portfolio is yeah. incredible. One day you're doing this hyper-realistic portrait, and then the next day you're doing this caricature of an adorable shark. You have such a diverse style, and it's really amazing to see how you shift and, you know, mold and are almost a chameleon in, in yeah. the art space. Yeah, this is the interesting thing because I do feel like when I do portraits, I do like the, I do like the experimenting, like brushwork and stuff, stuff like that. And when I do like piece like that sounds more commercial or something, I do in a different way. So I portraits for me, it's it feels like something more intimate, I guess. Uh, it feels like I can be a little bit more loose with stuff, but it's definitely what you said. Like, uh, I think I like this diversity. I like thinking like, uh, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? Um, I, I'm always like trying to challenge myself with new stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not, I'm not really sure if this is a really good advice to everyone because I feel like I feel like I'm doing the opposite of what you should be doing as an artist because sometimes when you do one thing and you're focused on one thing, it might be better to take, you know, jobs that a guy will look at your portfolio and say, oh, this guy is good at that. But then I just accepted that I, I am that, that guy that like experimenting stuff and you know, uh, I'm ready for whatever it comes. So <laughs> I'm just saying like, this might not, it might not be, it might not be good to every artist to go that way. Everyone has your own way to approach with art. And I think this way of experimenting stuff will be ever my way because I don't really like feeling, I don't, I don't really like feeling like I am in a, 
in a single path on my career. <laughs> like put in a box or... <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't feel like that. <laughs> so it's interesting. I, I'd be interested to know for any artists, and we're not artists, but for any artists watching, I'd be interested to know your comments. Um, you know, what do you think about this generalization versus this specific path? Um, just leave us a note in the comments because yeah. I'm interested. I, I'm also interested to ask, you know, in the in the um, interest of getting to know you, um, you know, we were looking through uh, all of your pieces and we stumbled across one where you did like this collage of, of various work. Um, and you had a great quote there that said, oh, yeah. <laughs> art will always be my refuge to seek peace, resilience, and perseverance. Um, and it seems like a really meaningful quote. And I was wondering what's what's behind that and what does the process of creation do for you that led you to, to make this quote? Oh, that's very deep because I, at that time, I was in a really hard time, like in my life. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was in the middle of the pandemic and we had really, at my house, we had really financial stuff that was like uh, going down. And I was, uh, when I say it's, it's always been my refugee, I really, it, it really, it really takes me back to when I was a kid and I used to, when I had nothing to play with, like I had no toys to play with, I used to draw my toys with my cousin. So used to draw toys and in, in, put in on hard paper and then we would cut it out and play with it. <laughs> like it was uh, Judy action figures, something like that. <laughs> so I think it brings me back to that moment. And at that time I was in a hard, uh, a hard time with money and stuff. And I was thinking now I have to study more to get to a greater place, which look at where I am now. But I was thinking that, and funnily enough, it will sound like a lie. It will sound like a lie, but I've, uh, not many people know this, but when at that time, when I was really bad uh, with stuff, I had in my mind a motto that would keep me on studying. And in my mind, it was like, focus on Disney. And it's really, it's not a lie, because I was like, when I said that to me, focus on Disney as a motto to study more and be really like a greater artist or something. Um, Disney meant like something as big as Disney, mm -hmm. right? Not exactly Disney, but something as big as that. So I thought, okay, so I need to study more and, you know, hard work, but it will it will pay back sometime. And then Disney came, I was like, oh my God, it's like so, it's so strange. It's like, I was calling it from, you know, I don't know, uh, whatever you believe, uh, I was calling somewhere or that it would came and then it came, it just, it was just there. Disney came to me and I was like, okay, something happened. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was, my thing because when we are on hard times i feel like we want we want to get money immediately and i was thinking like oh maybe i should not do in art anymore maybe i should like do something else that would bring money like right now because that's what i need and that was what i meant with no art is something that always helped me and and maybe if I stick to it, it will be, it will help me some someday or you know in the future. So I'm happy that I could stay with that thought on my mind. <laughs> yeah. and, and here you are. Yeah. And here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, it's, that's... it's an amazing, it's an amazing story of you know, just perseverance and um belief. Actually, that's yeah, belief, I think. Is, is what comes to mind when you talk about just that that drive that focus on a goal and just yeah and then manifesting disney in your in your life <laughs> yeah that, that was very like strange because I, I used to say that like almost every day and like there he was 
just a few moments after. <laughs> That's amazing. It was, it was, yeah. Was Disney like a part of your life growing up? Well, yes. When I was a kid, yes. I think I used to watch a lot of uh, Lion King. Mm -hmm. Like at, at my time, we had that those DVDs that you know we used to watch it over and over. And you know, it's not like today. Like we watch one movie and we have a thousand movies to watch. And Lion King was like something I would watch every day. <laughs> Um, Alice in Wonderland as well. Yeah, more, more like classical movies. But Lion King is, I think, is the most I would watch at my time. I think games as well. Like, do you remember that game from Mickey and Donald, uh, the Super Nintendo game? I, I, I think it's a lot. I don't remember that one, <laughs> but yeah. we're going to find it. And uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's Mickey and Donald and it was an adventurous thing and they they had different clothes they had the night clothes Donald had a barrel is a barrel barrel around his body and Mickey had a night like a noble night clothing and they had different kind of powers it was so cool I, I played it so much I think that that was the most Disney thing in my life as a kid. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Well, speaking like about your childhood, um, and and you mentioned this a little bit in the same quote that we talked about above or uh, before. Um, when did you really like fall in love with art and decide that you wanted to make this your career and your life's work? Oh yeah, I mentioned my cousin, right? Uh, my cousin teached me to draw. Uh, he used to draw like like really realistic stuff. And we used to draw to play with the drawing. So that's when I started learning drawing. And then funnily enough, today he doesn't work with art at all. Like he's totally off. I don't, I don't even think he can draw anymore, but uh, then I kept with it. Uh, and drawing was always like I wasn't really a talkative kid when I was a kid <laughs> uh, I wasn't really talkative so drawing was of my way of communicating as well like it's, it was my way to approach people so it may be uh, you may be explain a little bit why I do portraits even now because like if I was with Liam, I was like, oh, let me draw you. And we would become friend afterwards. And that was how I would approach people, drawing people and drawing something they like. So through the time I would keep drawing people and other stuff. And I used to draw comics for people on the school. And then when I was about to college, to go to college, people said I should do something related to art. So I ended up doing graphic design, which is not really uh, visual art, but it was some, something similar. And I graduated in graphic design and had some jobs on it. But then I realized, no, I have to just focus on illustration. I think that's my thing, right? Uh, I don't regret at all, like, I think all my knowledge as a designer shows up a little bit on my work today, but definitely, uh, I think illustration was always my thing, and uh, I just kept, like, said, saying to me, I just kept saying to me that I should just focus on illustration now, and call me an artist and that's it. I think when I did design graphic, when I did graphic design, I was thinking like, maybe this is what you get me more money. <laughs> but like, no, I, I ended up not being the thing, you know, I had some jobs, like, I really liked the, the, the jobs I had, but it wasn't still the thing I wanted. I think everyone was like, oh, you should focus on illustration and here I am. That's how I would summarize my path through illustration today. Or we recently uh, had the privilege to talk to Kander Soyu, another um, mm. Lorcana artist. 
and um, wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful artist. And um, he he always says and, and is very vocal about the fact that he um, his design experience um, helps him yeah. so much in his work. And he's mm-hmm. he thinks of himself as a designer first and then a, an artist or, or painter yeah. second. Um, and so I think, yeah, that knowledge that you that you gained as a graphic designer probably, I mean, is part of the reason you're. you're... Yeah, I think, and I think it it goes to something like design was really a trend at that moment. You know, I think Kendo and I has uh, an age that it may be similar, uh, but at that moment, design was a thing. Like, oh, everyone should do design, and people was like afraid of doing art, visual art, because it seems like something it would not give you a really bright future. So like, oh, we should. So then I think it's very, so I think it's very common to see people going through design and then coming back to illustration, at least people at my age. So I think this, uh, it's not, it's something that makes sense to me because it was the trending thing to do design, you know? And especially for for us, like in Brazil, like design is a really cool name. <laughs> like sounds cool. Oh, I am designer. Oh yeah, that sounds really <laughs> cool to say that. When you say like I am an artist, mm, what artist? Like art seems like you are just inside a cave and doing your stuff. Uh, and design is sounds like commercial thing. So that's fascinating. I, that tidbit about design may go in the teaser up front. Um, (laughs) um, so, uh, one thing we, we like to do, um, you know, we look through, uh, you know, obviously we talked to people love looking through portfolios and learning more about them, but, um, you know, oftentimes you're looking through artist portfolios and you find like a single piece and you're like, wow, for whatever reason, this one really speaks to me. Um, and for us, you had a a recent piece, uh, you called Sedna, uh, goddess of the ocean. Um, and it's beautiful and it looks like there's a story there. Um, and I was wondering. What what um, was behind the creation of that piece, and what are you trying to communicate with it? Oh yeah, Sedna was firstly a sketch. I was doing the creationary thing, where we do a creature every day of January, and Sedna was one of them. And when I looked at other reference, other kind of representation of this goddess it was like she's fingers she's she's fingerless right she doesn't have her fingers her fingers were shocked by her father in a very you know sad way you know this those tragedy in mythology like what the fingers became whales and seals and other you know other kind of things and when i saw other people drawing that I saw like in a very creepy way like a very like monstrous way like she was fingerless like the blood coming from her fingers and I was like I wanted to do something more wholesome right something more you would find like because it's she's giving birth Mm. to creatures on the ocean so maybe something more wholesome would be really cool so I thought on a way to do her fingers chopped off without seem like weird or you know like without looking like a horror movie <laughs> so I thought like this really cool thing with I was very at that time I was very influenced by some Loish tutorials so Loish has those fluidity also, I think you know uh, John Loring. It's an artist that uh, gives me a lot of inspiration. And he has this thing with doing just two colors on a piece and making them flow throughout the whole piece. And I was like thinking on that when I did Sedna. I was like, oh, maybe blue and yellow will be the thing. And it ended up being cool piece to me and it was just a sketch as I said to creationary and I ended up going further and finishing the piece and I thought like it was cool to add some whales to really look like she was giant and that's what I came up with (laughs) 
That's so cool. Uh, you know, I, I really like that one. What's really interesting about your story to me is like um, this piece is the confluence of multiple different things that were influencing you at the time. Um, you were doing creature sketches. You were inspired by John Lauren. You were inspired by, you know, I think it's software and 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 all of these things come together in this moment and that result in this piece. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's really fascinating to me. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't for the prediction area, I think. I didn't even know about the story of Sedna before. So I just wanted to do a way that would look really, you know, like warm <laughs> and and it would look like a mother to me like she's like in a fetal position right yeah yeah it seems like a uterus as well like a huge uterus i love it uterus uterus, uterus. yeah <laughs> no you're right <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> nailed it um so we have seen we always also another passion of ours is we when we're looking through artists portfolios is we love kind of seeing the fan art that artists themselves create and um we've seen a lot of fan art throughout your portfolio and we'd love to know if you had an opportunity to work on any existing property or character what what is your dream what would you love to work on Oh, maybe Disney. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <Dream> <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, with the focus on Disney, that makes sense to me. But I do like playing a lot. So maybe Nintendo is one thing that calls back to my, calls me back to when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, I like Mario, Zelda, and mm, Pokemon. So maybe that would be fun. And Pokemon is all about creature. You know? And I mentioned that I like doing creatures. So it might make sense to me to do something like that. But yeah, but uh, rather than thinking on somewhere I would like to be, I think when I see myself in the future, I see in my mind, it sounds like I want, I want to be recognizable as as an artist who is good with color and good with painting that's all I wanted to be like doesn't matter where I will be at the moment but if someone look at me and say oh that artist is good with color so mm -hmm. we should hire him just to do color that will be the moment I'm I think oh I'm now at the moment that I wanted to be at and that's it but if i would choose a place it would definitely be something like nintendo or something so you mentioned you mentioned franchises and you also mentioned you had a super nintendo growing up which is my favorite system of all time yeah what is your <laughs> what was your favorite super nintendo game if you could pick if you could only pick one what would you say your favorite is oh maybe aladdin mm -hmm. no I think it was good, but I think Donkey Kong was the best. Yeah, I think Donkey Kong was the was the one I played most. <laughs> Donkey, Kong, Donkey Country Kong Country blew my yeah. mind when it came out. <laughs> yeah, just the the style, the three D rendering, it was all so good. Uh, I've been playing the three DS version, but it's not just the same to me. It will, I will ever go back to that one. The Super Nintendo is it's really cool, and I think I like all the characters. Uh, I think it's uh, the one I've played the most in my whole life, I guess. <laughs> Good one. I've played it through as an adult. I love it. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the things we we like to do to, to you know, near the end of, of our interviews is a series of questions inspired by a Proust questionnaire. Um, anybody who's watched our, our interview videos uh, is, is familiar with this. So um, very open-ended, uh, but it's kind of a way to, to get to know you a bit, so. So we always start off with the question, what sound or noise do you love? Well, yeah, I, I like cacophony. Do you know this, this thing? Uh, I like when many people is talking at the same time, like a place that is full of people and people like, it's mostly like in restaurants or something, like people are talking random things. And I think this kind of noise makes me uh, focus the most. It's like the opposite of silence to me, but it's, it makes me focus like when there's a lot of people talking then, and then the, we call it cacophony, like there's 
many people talking at the same time. I think that's the, the noise I like. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like stories going on all around you. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I like this to, to hear people, different voices, I guess. Love it. Um, what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, um, fly. The sound of the fly, it's so horrible. Some flies are really annoying. Like they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they just can't get over your body. I was like, yeah, I had nightmares with flies already. I really hate it. It's really, it really kills my vibe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your idea of happiness? Yeah, that's a complex question, I guess. For me, it's difficult even to explain. Uh, firstly, I think happiness is the opposite of suffering or other negative emotions. So when we say that we are happy, we mostly compare with other moments of our lives. Like I was unhappy before and now I'm happy or compare with others. Like I am in a place that I feel like I should be happy because others are not so happy. So I think um, when we think about that, we think that the way we deal with happiness, we should also know how to deal with negative emotions because we don't, we mostly ignore, like when we are angry or sad, we think like, oh, I should just get rid of it because I want to be happy instead of just enjoying the moment and thinking like I am allowed to be angry or I am allowed to be sad now because I think it will be more interesting to your life than just uh, thinking about a happy moment and when I think of happiness I just don't think as an individual I think on a community way like I might be happy right now but my family is not happy I think uh my neighborhood's not as happy as I think they should. And maybe I will be happy when the concept of happiness and the concept of suffering will be very trivial. Like, oh, I'm suffering because someone said no to me. Oh, I'm happy because I'm taking an ice cream and not just suffering because I need to survive or happy because I'm, you know, because I have money or something. So maybe that's when I feel like I will be happy when the concept of happiness and suffering will be very trivial. It, does that make sense? I yeah, think it's yeah. really difficult to me to explain because it, I could talk an hour about it. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think that, yeah. It is, a, yeah, no, you're right. It's, the way you're explaining it is very complex and and but you've given us a taste of what you... Yeah, I think you've conveyed it as well as you can in uh, two minutes or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, who's your favorite hero in fiction? Oh, Spider-Man, definitely. Especially Miles, I think. Mm. But I think Spider Spider-Man was made to be like this human kind of hero because he has different thoughts and it, it sounds like me because I'm always like thinking about stuff and overthinking stuff. So I think it, I feel really relatable in that way. Rather than a hero that's all powerful and seems like a god, I'm mostly more fond of the ones who looks, who looks more like humans to me. <laughs> I guess. Who is your favorite heroine in fiction? heroin I think I was thinking about it and I thought on a character when that I liked when I was really young I used to uh, it's really here I used to read a lot of manga I think Bleach is a thing you might know and there is a character I really like Soy Fawn oh and she is she so fun. <laughs> she's really good because she's really, uh, she looks bad tempered and she's not really like the nice girl. 
that we see often, at least at my time, we see like those nice and you know, pinky clothes go there. And she is really different. She has different emotions and you can really relate to her. Like she really seems bad, but she has like a backstory that, that, that explains it a lot. And she's super powerful. Her, her, her main weapon is like a huge missile. So I think that that made me fall in love with the character. It's very specific, but I think it's the one I love the most back at that time. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm really old and my references are really like <laughs> from, from the 90s or something. <laughs> not at so, yeah. all, not at all. It's, it's what resonates most yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. um, so what, uh, what talent would you most like to have? I do like music a lot. So maybe I'd like to play something. Um, I like piano a lot. I really would love to have a piano in my house or maybe a cello, I like that, that big one. Mm -hmm. you do like, that's really powerful for me. I really feel like I want it to be a musician. <laughs> but yeah, I never really had this like, yeah. I, I really want it to be like this. To play this classical instrument, I feel like they're really deep. Yeah. Um, what is your most treasured possession? Um, other than my cat, I think uh, my friends, I guess. Uh, because I feel like my friends to me, I treat them as family members. So if I lose them, I will be one of the few moments I will be looking desperate, I guess. <laughs> so I'm not really this desperate in my life, but I think if I lose friends, it might be the worst moment of my life. And so I think my most treasure is, is the people who encourages me because I really have a low self-esteem. I think that's really common for artists and the people who really believes in me. And I'm always like, they're always telling me to do things I think I should not. So I, I love my friends, so maybe they're my valuable thing. <laughs> Beautiful answer. Um, what are your favorite names? Oh, names. I would think of my own name, I think, because Eri Welly sounds fun. And I, I would, you know, uh, I, I Maybe I, I would just show you. Uh, maybe I would I would just tell a little story here because Eri Welly comes from Eri Welton, right? I had some foreign friends who wouldn't be able to pronounce my name, so instead of Eri Welton, which is my name, he said Eri Wellington, and short for Wellington became Swelly. And then I had this, like, some people would call me Welly, other people would call me Eri, because Eri Velton, it's, even for Brazilians, is a really long name. So I just came up with the both of them. Eri Welly would feel like, and it feels like fun to me to say Eri Welly, the rhythm on, on this pronunciation sounds fun. And I wanted my work to sound as fun as my, name sounds so <laughs> I came up with I really so I think it's it's a good I don't know I'm not I don't know if it's a good name but it's a name I'm I really resonate with when I, I think of it Everybody. Love that. <laughs> what is your motto well motto I think uh, I I have this quote from Alice in Wonderland that I really like, and I think it really had, had it really had clicked me when I heard that. Uh, is when the caterpillar is asking her, "Who are you?" You might know that 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 moment, and she and she says, "I don't know. I I have been so many people till this morning, something like that." She said, and I was like, "Yeah, maybe that's the way." because I feel like uh, we should allow ourselves to be many people 
on our lives to be different, to be to have many names. <laughs> so I think that really it gets me because I had always this on my mind that I am allowed, allowing me to be different every time. And Alice is all about it. She's not afraid of taking new risks. So uh, that quote made me realize that. And on the book, that, that conversation is really, really good. It's longer and it's really fun. So I really love the, the story and the book. So I think everyone should, should, should read it. So yeah, I think that the one that I could say that drives me the most is this quote from Alice. Love it. Um, last question. Uh, okay. What is one question we didn't ask you that you wish we would have? Oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me think of it. Well, well, there is one thing uh, I think a few people know about me that I think you would only ask if I would tell you, but I have an eyesight problem, right? Uh, my sight seems, I, I look at things and they look a little duplicated to me. Uh, it's called keratoconus. It's a disease in your cornea. So uh, it will either increase as the time goes on or just stop. I don't know yet, but this is something I have to adapt in my process, right? So I had to, uh, to know where the color is on the color wheel and to adapt to zoom in stuff when I need to and to calculate my brushwork and something uh, that helped me a lot was to meet with a friend that I know a friend and he is colorblind. His name is Beto Lima and he's colorblind and as controversial as, as, controversial as it may sound, he, his work with color is great. <laughs> so he really, so looking at, at him and how he does his stuff, it helped me to see like, this is a deficiency that it shouldn't stop me. So I really thought that, so I really think of that, like something I just need to adapt and it's really working out. I think that I don't feel like very sad for having it anymore. I just have my way of doing art uh, that might be different from people. Like my color will, like my color slides on my Photoshop is really long. Like I do, the, the whole screen is like color slides <laughs> because I can see what they are. So that's my way to adapt. I don't feel like this will ever stop me. I will only stop when I really lose my entire sight, which I should, which I should hope it will never happen. But uh, this is the thing I have and I wouldn't give up on my passion because of it. I, that is so inspirational. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to pick a career and a, and a path in life um, where you have this, you know, this challenge that other people don't and to, and to persevere and force through it and adapt. Um, it's incredibly inspirational. I appreciate you sharing that. Oh well, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like when I, when I knew about that the first time, it was really horrible because I was thinking, mm -hmm. I even had someone saying, oh, maybe you should give up. Maybe you should find something else. And I was like, no, I think there is a way to keep on it. And, uh, I'm doing my treatments and it's going very well. Uh, yeah, I, I have my own way to doing stuff. And it's, it's been like that since, you know, uh, it will be like that forever, I guess, but it's just the way it is. <laughs> Incredibly inspirational. Um, yeah, I, oh, um, you know, we have to wrap up here in a second, but but bonus question, just because I'm okay. curious, what's the name of your cat? 
Hum. Ah. <laughs> I call her sujinha, but actually it means dirty. <laughs> sujinha, do you want to give a message to people out there? Anything you have to say? Ah. <laughs> It's, it's because when I was looking for a cat, uh, my mother asked if I should keep her. And I was like, she's like, she like, she has those tiger prints on her body. And she's like uh, gray and yellow at some parts. And like, I would say, oh, mother, she's, she's looks like she's dirty, right? And then we came up with it and then we all love her now. <laughs> well, that, that's that's where that's where I, her name came from. Uh, it's Sujinha. It, it it basically means little dirty thing. <laughs> it's, a, it. it's a it's a cute way to insult her, I think. But it 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 became like the the mother of the house again. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's really nice. That's adorable. <laughs> Wait, this is. This has been so wonderful. Um, can't thank you enough for taking the time. Um, we loved every second of it. And um, you know, we're gonna link all of your, your social media profiles and everything down below. We encourage everybody to, to give Ari a follow. And um, we really look forward to having you back down the road when we can talk really specifically okay. about your, your Lurkana yeah, sure. art. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know we'll have to wait a little while for that. But uh, in the meantime, thanks so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing uh, where your career goes. Oh yeah, thank you. I was hoping like when I saw the first interview, I was like, will they call me? I'm such an underground artist. <laughs> Would they ever call me? I was like, I have to be prepared for this moment. And here I am, I think. I really appreciate you calling me. And yeah, uh, I'm hoping to see what's come next. Yeah, yeah that means so much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do you wish to give a message to your fans out there? You don't have anything to say? <laughs> I'll take it as a no. Okay, alright. <laughs>